administrations have an individual PA of our book dummies as living heroes, keeping the Philippines afloat in tumultuous times like the 1997 Asian financial crisis and the recent global recession, and helping us advance steadily during more prosperous periods. For estimates of the Philippines Overseas Employment Association, this nation has deployed almost 11 million foreign Philippines abroad. There are around 2.8 million of them in the United States, over 1 million in Saudi Arabia, more than 250,000 in Australia, greater than 150,000 in Hong Kong, besides just a few of the countries that have received our OFWs. Data from both 2009 and 2010 has revealed that of this vast multitude, over 70% of these overseas Filipino workers are women. Six out of ten of these recently hired OFWs are female domestic workers, entertainers, caregivers, nurses, and health service workers. In Hong Kong, 90% of the OFWs are women, working mostly as domestic helpers, as are 74% of Filipino OFWs in Kuwait. In Japan, 53% of our foreign workers are women in the hospitality and entertainment industry. So many of our women have become overseas foreign workers, but a particular term has arisen: the feminized migration, we refer to as phenomenon. But while some data references as evidence of the success of women's liberation and an example of gender equality in the workplace, this is a trend that brings with it a heavy burden as well from the social costs posed by mothers leaving their children behind, the emotional strains brought about by wives separated at length from their husband, to the widespread predicament of kids and other kin becoming added to all the W orders and begins spending breakfast in the This is a development of support and start for confusion and problematic. While the bulk of female of W is raised at the age of 25 to 29, the numbers still encompass women at every stage of life. Many of these Filipinas are mothers and even grandmothers whose circumstances compel them to leave their families behind in order to give them much better lives. They suffer unspeakable sorrows as they sweat and struggle far from the ones they love, then dry their eyes to hold them before bedtime. Honestly, I speak. Give these hardworking women a voice, and a lot of the efforts of all Filipino ladies strenuously laboring as OFWs. These Filipinas must be recognized for the great, great sacrifice they undertake due to this country's hard economic state. I therefore implore all my fellow lawmakers to meticulously look into the needs of an EPA applied for OFWs, especially women OFWs. Let us find new ways to make their burdens a bit more bearable. Craft fresh approaches to minimizing the social cost of migrant workers and develop innovative methods of maximizing the proceeds made possible by feminized migration. While working overseas offers a prospect of higher income, the reality is that potential gains are often subsumed by challenging consequences. The material advantages offered to women that work abroad also get the way social family care for the last of children who are left behind. By tradition, it is held that the man assumes the position of the head of the family, the provider of the household's needs. But as statistics show, the smart fact that despite the assertions of high growth rates, women have been obligated to take the duty of providing for the family as well. Unfortunately, a certain such role comes at the expense of children who are being abandoned neglected, and even abused by others. Studies by the nation they are harsh, physical, and psychological impact on women to the leading for jobs overseas. Research conducted the leading staff likewise to stand to these, having mothers' access to results in drastic disruption in their children's sides. These come to bear by behavioral aberrations such as irritational outbursts of anger, and persistent confusion around scares and general unsocial Furthermore, furthermore, these children often view their parents, and particularly their mother's migration, as a type of desertion. Then this leads the child being witnesses as monetary compensations for parental actions, consequently resulting in the child developing shallow and realistic actions. UNICEF data reveals that over 6 million Filipino children have been left behind their parents to pursue work abroad. Finally, then, 
the money sample falls short for the amount of patterns that are behind. In other words, there is a significant observed movement in the conditions of patterns that appear in the Philippines, especially given the existing social community. That is a potential for the Philippine economy, following a smoothly unfavorable circumstances, such as being poor, having to solve the unsafe work environment, and being on the receiving end of verbal, physical, and sexual abuse from employers. I therefore make this urgent call to the administration to live up to its commitment to create ample employment opportunities locally in a number sufficient to meet the demand for our growing population. While we persist in calling OFW's heroes, we must also learn to work with the notion that overseas employment is an acceptable instrument for the economic development. The ultimate goal should be the existence of abundant domestic employment process, especially for our women. Only then will we have a desperate outflow of women hunting for jobs far from home, suffering untold deprivation and degradation, particularly in countries where gender inequality persists. Meanwhile, we must seek ways to protect the Filipina or the WWE from abuse, and in particular, sexual abuse. A recurrent complaint of those engaged in an pain and hospitality in the field, but rather than other disciplines as well, we must strengthen the implementation of laws against the people of the and anti trafficking which often result in conditions of slavery or prostitution. We must improve the state of our foreign affairs, particularly in countries where large and Filipino OFW populations to ensure adequate protection for our women. We must ensure that Filipino OFWs, no matter where they are, have affordable and instantaneous access to legal aid when needed. And we must provide education and educate the Filipino of OFWs that will facilitate able financial management, foster their physical care, further advocate for the hospitals of their host country, flourish emotionally, and feel rigorous things with their families. We must also find a way to erase the stigma attached to the Filipino, who are often regarded as little more than prostitutes and domestic health. While we hypothesize they are a here at home, we still allow our Filipino OFWs to be tested and disregarded in foreign lands. Effort must be made to ensure that Filipinas are perceived as liberal, dedicated, and talented individuals worthy of admiration and appreciation. This means we must also be proud to use the number of quality of daycare centers and similar facilities that aim specifically to overcome each other in the absence of mothers. The father, eldest, and new grandparents of other relatives and assuming responsibility for the care of the children left behind. Such institutions can greatly assist in ensuring the physical, emotional, and developmental needs of these children are addressed while the mothers are away. In this era of advanced technology, we must come up with systems to provide easy, inexpensive ways for OFWs, especially those who are mothers, to keep in constant touch with their families via the internet, phone, mass media, or other devices. The provision of online and reliable ways of communication should be ever Finally, we must, above all, utilize every resource available to encourage our women to stay in the Philippines to their families in the face of the country's backlogs and opportunities. The despondency requires Filipinas or Filipina or Filipinas who are to be in a market should be hampered by increasing the amount and benefits of local employment for such a wide credit approach. Our government of economic expansion is within our world. Installation is my perfect hope that this legislator and the administration can combine and coordinate efforts to not only ensure the receipt and protection of our Filipinas working abroad, but to show better opportunities for women here in the Philippines as well. Cebu has already asserted numerous efforts to increase job opportunities for women through a variety of approaches to homies, including assisting the creation of small and medium enterprises, especially those with need to greater employment for women ensuring access to financial resources like micro lending and cooperative credit, and expansion of training and other educational options here for teams. If this is the track record, that gives you the confidence to call the Philippine Congress Board for its uttering process of Philippines who want to work here at home and ensure that all the women that they find their parents and will be protected, respected, and well adjusted. Let us give work for the Indian and the Chinese every advantage job and country allows, and let us guarantee them a more stable, equitable, and honorable Philippines that will welcome them in the not so distant future. Mabuhi ang mga kabayan, mabuhi ang mga poet of you, mabuhi ang Philippines.